Hey, happy Friday, guys. Happy Good Friday. Of course, we want, want you to join us at 12 noon, uh, online-only service of our Good Friday service here at Impact Church. Love to have you join us, 12 noon. Uh, it'll be on all of our channels, on the, on the app and Facebook and all that kind of stuff. And so join us Good Friday, 12 noon. So today I want to talk about uh, Matthew 27. Let's talk about the actual crucifixion. It says, now from verse 45, now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, which means 12 to 3, uh, there was darkness all over the land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, uh, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Think about it. Jesus had never been out of the presence of God. I mean, we know he came to earth, man, anointed by God, hypostatic union. But this is the first time sin was actually on him. My sin, your sin, the sin of the whole world. And it says in verse 47, and some of those who stood there, when they heard that said, this man is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them uh, ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine and put it on a reed and offered it to him to drink. The rest said, let him alone. Let us see if Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And then he beheld and behold, the veil key, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom and the earth quaked. And the rocks were split and the graves were open. And me, think about this. Many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. And so when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that happened had happened, they feared greatly, saying this, truly, truly, this was the Son of God. Man, that's a powerful scripture. And so again, how does this apply to us? How does this apply to us right now in 2024? So be thankful for Jesus and what he went through on our behalf. Let's be thankful for all that he went through. Thank God he raised from the dead. Thank God he's alive right now so we can walk in victory today. Let's look back over at Hebrews chapter 9, verse 18 says, Therefore, not even the first covenant was dedicated without blood. For when Moses has spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and goats with water, scarlet wool, and hyssop, and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant which God had commanded you. And then likewise, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry, and according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. There's no forgiveness. Now, we know this way over in Genesis. Remember when Adam and Eve sinned, when they tried to make those little temporary fig leaves, God had to go get an animal and give them, give them skin. Put, he had to put, put them in. So blood was shed for that animal for Adam and Eve. And so anytime a person sinned, there had to be some kind of bloodshed. Thank God Jesus did the ultimate blood shedding for sin for all mankind. And so the new covenant required blood, and we know the old covenant required blood. I know Mark Hankins talks about shedding or sprinkling the blood. That's why, we, you know, we don't sprinkle blood with, with actual blood. We sprinkle blood by, in the New Testament, by declaring the word. We got to speak the word over our lives and, and speak the word over our situation. And so we're going to plead blood everywhere, which means we're speaking God's victory over every situation, over every circumstance. So we're, but we're, we're doing what the word says. We're pleading the blood. We're declaring the blood. We're declaring the word uh, in the name of Jesus. So after the law was read to the people, Moses took the blood of animals and threw it on the altar and the book and the people saying, this is the blood of the covenant that God commanded for you. The picture was that of purification so that the people could be brought into a covenant relationship with God as the people declared that they would do all that was written in the law. Remember Joshua? We're going to do all that was written in the law. And so the blood is needed to purify. The blood is needed to really set us apart. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness 
of sin. Someone had to die for you to be forgiven. Someone had to die for you to be purified. Someone had to die for you to be healed. Someone had to die for you to walk in this new cleansing covenant. Someone had to die for a new covenant to be enacted. And that person who died, his name is Jesus. And so without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. And this is really the foundational principle of God's dealing with man. This covenant relationship we have, it had to be based on the shed blood of Jesus. So modern people think that sin is remitted or forgiven by time. They think time heals. No, no, sin is remitted because of the blood, by our good works. No, it's not by your good works, sweetheart. It's, it's forgiven because of the blood, by our decent lives. You're going to live. No, we don't believe in a 51% gospel where your, your good works outweigh your bad works. No, it's you're forgiven because of the blood. And so, or by simply death. Jesus, now because you died don't, doesn't solve everything. You have to make this declaration that you accept Christ, that's what it says in John chapter 11, you got to accept Christ before you go to the grave that you will live eternally. But there is no forgiveness without the shedding of blood. And there's no perfect forgiveness without a perfect sacrifice. Jesus was the perfect sacrifice. And the shedding of Jesus' blood is God's answer to man's problem of sin. Happy Good Friday, guys. See you this weekend. Hopefully see you on Easter Sunday. God bless you all. Hopefully you can tune in to the uh, broadcast. Of course, tomorrow at church, we'll have our our um, uh, spring carnival at 12, Easter egg hunt, food, fun, games for the whole family. We love you guys so much. Have a great day. Have a great Friday. Friday. We'll see you Monday on the Faith for Today podcast. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you.